everybody, it's Michael Martin. Happy Monday, hope you're doing well. We have some really good episodes with Ganja coming up. We recorded two of them Thursday um, for this Wednesday and the following Wednesday. Just because we're busy and when we have the time, we like to get those things recorded. So we got them in the can, as they say. Um, we answered a couple of questions. One is about, you know, position sizing around a five standard deviation move. You know, I'll let you watch the episode. We covered that in detail. And the other one is, is it better to, you know, trade short term to turn over your cash and then avoid overnight risk? And it's like, no. I go towards overnight risk. That's where, to me, the money's made, you know, for the way that I do it. Um, so avoiding overnight risk would put me out of business. I know many of you think differently because you've been taught somehow that overnight risk is too risky. And, you know, if you're trading too large, I suppose it can be. But the way that I do it, the money is actually made overnight. Two, there's a, there's a fallacy of being able to turn your money over faster by, you know, trading. So it's like, how do you, the example that I used was, if you look at all the denominators of a number like 60, do you want, you know, do you want to make 60 trades and make 1%? Or do you want, you know, six trades that make 10? So you kind of just get to decide how to how to do it. It all kind of adds up, though I haven't seen any evidence that moving your money faster can get you where the end goal is, that fewer trades that have bigger returns can go, right? Because it's all about the math. And the frequencies are largely equal, you know, again, depending on your setup. So you can kind of figure out what you want your trading to do for you. Anyway, today, I'm going to talk about um, another great question that came in from somebody about living inside of a drawdown. I don't really differentiate winning periods and streaks. I don't think in terms of streaks, um, winning streaks or losing streaks. I don't think about um, losing streaks. Now, at the beginning, when I didn't know what I was doing, that stuff might have had a big, bigger impact on me. I just don't remember. Um, as far as seeking validation, I kind of knew that this, the rules had a positive expected value. I just hadn't seen it happen in actuality. So my mindset example would be, you know, put yourself in a spot where you know the expected value of a trade and say you do a thousand trades, you know your accuracy rate's 40%. So when you look at the result of any one particular trade, you're basically saying, okay, I have a small paper cut loss. That goes over here in this basket. You have a winning trade where you make your 3R or whatever your number is. Okay, it might be fewer, but it's a bigger parcel, so to speak. I'm just going to put that in the winner shelf. And so then over time, you know, I have the benefit of a lot of history. I'm able to say I take everything in stride, I guess is the easiest way to say it. There's really no reason to get worked up or to feel differently because I'm in a drawdown because I expect them. You know, I try to minimize them through position sizing because I generally have an idea. Again, none of this stuff is back testing doesn't predict the future, but it can help you anticipate things. You can always emphasize again the parts that make you most uncomfortable, which of course would probably be how many drawdowns do you have over a 20-year period of time, right? So that can help you and your emotional constitution, right? You got to figure you'll have at least one a year, depending on your size too. Like your position sizing and drawdowns have a lot to do with the magnitude of the drawdown and its duration. So you can kind of position size around not just how much you want to make, but how to also minimize your drawdown. So I don't really think of it as like something I have to live through, like someone had cancer and we have to endure or blah, blah, blah. It's just more like if you want to, I, I always say it this way, even if you don't want to go pro, you probably want to kind of get the results that professional traders get. And 
that means you have to kind of dovetail your behavior with what they do, even if you're only just going to run your own money in-house, right? And so in that mindset, when you're a pro trader, you kind of understand that losses are part of the business. And so you just take them in stride because you expect them. It's not that you celebrate them. I don't actually celebrate the wins either because it's just part of what I do. Right? My trading is an extension of behavior, which was, you know, congregated, conjugated completely with my emotional makeup. And I guess I, I know it's, it's easier for me because I have a lot of experience, but I don't let any one particular trade put me on, on a tilt, neither a big winner nor a loser. I don't have big losers because I don't let them get there. And I'm very willing to surrender a position to get out of it, you know, if it's not going in my direction, you know, pretty quickly. And I just come back the next day and kind of see or follow my rules, you know, like you would do. So, so I, don't, I don't have any real special trick in that if you're going to do a thousand trades, you can understand that you're going to have a drawdown. I think what's difficult is that a lot of folks are doing discretionary chart reading at home and they don't even really know what the expected value of a trade is. And so if that's who you are, to me that says a lot about a person's behavior. You must have a lot of faith in somebody else's rules. But I, I couldn't operate like that because I'm responsible for the P&L. I don't get to delegate blame, blame to, you know, fast money people or Jim Cramer because I have his action alerts if he still has that or some investment club or any other type of alert service. You know, I got to shave my own face and, uh, you know, every day. So everything that happens inside, you know, the portfolio on the P&L comes down to me. So I anticipate that there will be clusters of wins, there'll be clusters of losses. I don't necessarily call them streaks. Streaks, I think, really kind of happen for, you know, people who are doing discretionary stuff, um, which is certainly one way to go. But I don't become emotionally invested in the outcome of any one particular trade because it doesn't really say much. It's just part of who I am and what I do. I've detached. I love with detachment is, is an expression that you hear. So that's what I do. I love it with detachment. I put on the risks that are worth having. And I know, generally speaking, how frequently I'm going to lose. And you take everything in stride. And that's important because you can go on tilt for winners and for losers. I've seen both sides of it. Certainly when you're losing money, you can throw up your hands because you don't know what you're doing or you're following somebody else's rules. And you can be just like, man, this sucks. I just can't take it. I'm going to go for broke. That normally doesn't work out all that well. And it makes a bad situation or a trying situation anyhow. Because it's really all how you define it. You define that situation as being good or bad. There is no book of trading rules somewhere like the Ten Commandment that says at 5% you're in a drawdown. After 10%, you're in a losing streak. And then somewhere after 20, you suck. There's none of that. You put the labels on it. Remember we talked about there's a difference between using your judgment and being a judge. So you use your judgment to put on the trades that you thought were going to make you money. The, 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 the outcomes showed up the way that they did. And now you're going to judge your own judgment when in many ways you didn't know what you were doing from the very, very beginning. So you can be disappointed, but again, they say expectations have built-in disappointments. So you can do all that stuff before you even risk a dollar and say, I don't know the backtesting rules. I don't want to spend the money on a trading engine. I don't want to pay a subscription service for the data. And I'm unwilling to drop that kind of coin just to get the results. I'd rather just do it and wing it. So then, you know, you, to me at that point, you don't have the right to, to go on tilt. Right? Because you didn't do the work. Because even if you did do the work, you're still going to have drawdowns. The difference, though, is that you can better anticipate putting your rules into a simulator to see how they would have done. Because typically when people are sold systems, they're sold on the outsized gains. They're sold on the abundance part. When, when an allocator looks at a potential trader who can create alpha, what they want to take a look at is a couple of things. What's the daily volatility of 
their account balance. In other words, when you look at percent rates of return, how much, right, does it go from a million five to 995,000 to 990, then up to 1.2, you know, so they look at those jumps because they have to ascertain, are you lucky or are you good? Do you have a way of being in the right place at the right time? Or are you betting too big? You can also go on tilt if you make a lot of money. I've seen people have a winning streak, which is just dumbass random luck. Nothing wrong with it. I'll take it. So will you. But they're like, ah, I'm onto something. I could have made this much more if I just changed my bet size. So now my R goes from being a half a percent to a whopping 2% or more. And that typically happens at the peak of the equity, which means, you know, you have to trade your equity curve. So living through the, draw, the drawdown, I do the same thing that I do when I'm within a, what you would, you would probably think of as upside or a winning streak. I, I behave the same. I'm placated. I don't get overexcited about gains. I don't get overly worried or, or despondent or whatever about losses. Again, I've got the benefit of several decades of experience, so it's probably easier for me to say, and I don't mean to minimize whatever you might be going through. But again, part of me is a Buddhist and believes that man is the cause of all his own suffering. So basically, you need to really, really think about what are you willing to do to develop your craft? Because if you have certain strong feelings about being in a drawdown, the money is incidental, right? Who cares about what the money is, right? The money is just a way of keeping score. But it's really start, like, what do you start thinking about yourself? What do you start thinking about your process? Do you judge yourself and all that? Or do you start putting the blame on other people? That's why I'd like to be self-reliant because I can't blame anybody else anyway. I'm putting on the damn trades. So who's there to blame? Victor, that's going to go over well. Can you imagine hearing that conversation, how to lose a job in three seconds? Anyway, so I appreciate the question. I hope I'm addressing it. You know, there's just a sentence that comes across as a question, so I kind of have to figure out what's the intention or where the person's coming from. I hope I did a good job. But ultimately, I just try to stay placated in good times and in bad. Tomorrow's another day. I'm never going to let any one trade define me as a person or my track record or my, my self-worth and, and my self-esteem. It's just part of who I am at this point. It's what I do. And the, the, I'm powerless over the results. The best thing I can do is control the controllables. As the late, great Ken Revisa said, who was a, a mental coach for the Chicago Cubs, I took my sons to him too. He sadly passed away. He lived in the South Bay. Great guy. Um... Control the controllables. What can you control? Hope that helps. I'll be back tomorrow. And uh, like I said, we have some really good episodes coming up with Ganja on the next two Wednesdays. Hopefully there'll be a streak there. You never know. But I appreciate you all being here very much. And I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, everybody. Thanks for being here. Please take a minute, like, and subscribe to the show. You could also leave a comment. I don't have all the answers, so it's good to get some feedback. Also, if you would like to support the show, check out the links below. You can get the free audio book of the inner voice of trading, uh, and also information about the course that I teach with Victor Spirandio. Thanks for being here, folks. I'll see you tomorrow.